On December the 1st, 1987, a retired police officer who chose his pseudonym Philip Spencer was walking across Ilkley Moor in Yorkshire in Northern England. He was visiting his father-in-law in a nearby village that was situated on the other side of the moor. It was an eight kilometre journey and it left the town of Ilkley at around 7.10am in the morning and had taken his camera in the hope of taking some pictures of the town from the top of the moor. Philip had recently moved from London to remote West Yorkshire with his wife and child after retiring from the police force as they wanted to be closer to his wife's family. As well as taking his camera, he also took a compass in case a fog suddenly rolled in. As he was approaching an overgrown quarry, you could hear what sounded like low humming. At first, he believed the humming was coming from a low flight aircraft, but as he approached a small hill, he came upon a strange figure up ahead. The figure was dark green and about four feet in height with a large head and long thin arms. The being signalled to Philip to stay away, whereas Philip took out his camera and took a photograph of it. At this point, the creature ran away and Philip decided to follow it, but lost it in the fog. All of a sudden, he heard a craft rise up and fly off into the sky. Philip described the craft as white in colour, consisting of two saucer-shaped paths that appeared to be attached that is, one on top of the other, but he did not photograph the craft. Philip had now found the source of the humming as the craft appeared to emit a loud hum. Now intrigued, instead of continuing his journey to his in-laws, he headed to a nearby town that was about 30 minutes away. When he arrived in the town, he figured it must be around 8.15am, but when he checked the town hall clock, he found it was actually 10am. He had somehow lost two hours and his compass was pointing in the opposite direction to what it should have been. Philip Spencer could not quite believe what he'd just encountered and was even questioning his sanity and headed off to the nearby town of Keeley, knowing they had a one-hour photo processing service as he was seeking further proof of what had just happened to him that morning. He then dropped off his film and waited impatiently for the film to be developed. When he was finally handed the pictures, he found that the photograph was extremely poor quality, but there was no mistaking the image that showed a being with large ears, short legs and long thin arms. It was definitely the creature he'd seen on the moors. Over the next few days, he contacted UAP researchers Jenny Randalls and Peter Hoff. Hoff was initially sceptical, but after talking to Spencer, found him to be a credible witness and believed that he had really encountered something out of this world. Philip then handed Hoff the photo he had taken, which immediately made the news. But Philip Spencer insisted that he remain anonymous because he was considering rejoining the police force and he did not want it known that he had seen a strange being along with the UAP, as he would then question his mental health or be called a hoaxer. This would surely put his career in jeopardy. Philip Spencer did not ask for or make any money from the story, so there was no reason to fabricate his story for monetary gain. Philip was convinced that he'd seen something extraterrestrial and wanted to know more, and most importantly, wanted to know what happened to his missing time. Peter Hoff then sent the photograph to various experts for analysis. The first to examine it was a wildlife photographer who said it did not look like any known animal. It was then sent to the Kodak Laboratory in Hemel Hempstead in southern England, who said they did not detect any evidence of tampering with the film. A US Navy expert by the name of Bruce McAbee and UAP experts claimed the photograph was too grainy to be properly tested. It was later claimed by UAP analysts that a few weeks after his encounter on the moors, Philip Spencer was approached by the Ministry of Defence who had opened up a file on Spencer and had sent two men to his home as they wanted the photograph. Unfortunately, it was still with the investigators. Why were they so interested in Philip Spencer and his photograph? And were they trying to cover something up? A short time after the incident on the moors, Philip Spencer claims that he started to get weird dreams and following Hoff's advice decided to undergo regressive hypnotherapy. The therapy was carried out on March 16, 1988 by Dr. James Singleton and under hypnosis, his original account and description of what had happened to him was different. On hypnosis, Philip Spencer was able to recall seeing the being on the hill, whereas he became immediately paralyzed and then lifted up from the ground and pulled into a craft. When he first entered the craft, a voice told him to be calm 
then everything went black. When he woke up, he found himself in a room that was brilliantly lit and a voice that said they were not going to harm him. He was then placed on the operating table and a beam of light was shone on him. Suddenly, green beings performed medical experiments on him and inserted instruments into his nose and mouth. After the procedure, he was shown around the craft and when he looked around one of the portholes, he could see stars and then the earth and realised that he was now in space. He was then shown a film and the footage showed apocalyptic scenes that included nuclear explosions, famines and floods. He was then shown a second film, but strangely, the contents were never revealed because the beings who abducted him did not want humanity to know. Philip Spencer's experience is a striking similarity to what other abductees have experienced, while they not only describe being in space, but have shown film footage with apocalyptic scenes of death and destruction. After viewing the films, Philip figured he must have blacked out again because he suddenly found himself in the same location from where he was initially abducted. Under hypnosis, when Spencer was returned to Ilky Moor, it was found that when he first encountered the strange being, it was not actually warning him to stay away, but was actually waving goodbye, and it was at this point that he'd taken the photograph. He described in detail the description of the beings that were about four feet tall with large eyes and pointed ears. They had two toes on their feet and a funny V-shaped arrangement. This matched the grainy photograph he had taken. At the end of the regression, Dr. James Singleton believed it was a genuine recall. When the Ilkymore incident was reported in the news in the UK, it became one of Britain's most famous UAP sightings. Well-known journalist and previous employer of the Ministry of Defence, Nick Pope, said that the incident was probably one of the top ten encounters in the UK and was cited as one of the most convincing UAP incidents to ever happen. Fortunately, Philip Spencer was able to rejoin the police force, as it had strong character witnesses claiming he was honest and trustworthy. Still, it appears that remaining anonymous would have been a wise course of action to take, even though he was seen as honest and trustworthy and might still have questioned his sanity.